I can start? Okay. It's great. Yeah. Uh, it's. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to be here. Yeah. Um, I'm Wang Junjie Zhang, yeah, a security researcher from the Houston Networks. Yeah, my research direction uh, is Windows uh, vulnerability research, including the user mode and the kernel mode. Uh, and also have been listed as the uh, uh, most valuable researcher of the Microsoft uh, 2020, 2022, and 2023, 2024. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's just start my talk. And this is, uh, I already introduced myself and our uh, colleague -coll here. And first, uh, let's see our agenda today. It's mainly consists of four parts. Uh, we will introduce architecture of the uh, LPC and RPC. So we will have a deeper understanding of it and then look at some uh, common vulnerabilities inside uh, LPC and RPC. And uh, we will study some root cause of the uh, vulnerabilities. And then I will show you some details of the vulnerabilities I found about myself and my team, and which can bypass the ARPC RPC uh, security mechanism. Uh, I will show you step by step uh, to use uh, this small security flaw to bypass the security mitigations like SR, DEP, XFG, and finally get system share. Uh, you won't get it uh, from anywhere else. So, and that's the way I make a conclusion. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, architecture, architecture. Yeah, we already know um, ARPC uh, was introduced uh, to replace the ARPC. Uh, it's called a lightweight, lightweight procedure call, uh, mainly used in uh, Windows system. Uh, inside the uh, Windows system services, uh, and it's uh, concerned by many researchers uh, for each, its huge attack service. And this is a, 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 a RPC and RPC architecture. And why we combine the ARPC and RPC together uh, for reason? Uh, why we combine uh, it together? For reason list below, uh, most uh, RPC services is based on the ARPC or NumPy, so it's almost uh, based on the same uh, security mechanism. And the security flaw inside the uh, ARPC can affect the security of RPC services. And this is uh, also the architecture of the ARPC RPC from uh, Windows internal. Uh, you can communicate uh, this, uh, see the communication module inside it. And it also supports some message queries and some share section. Uh, also uh, supports share, share section to pass the message. Uh, why we use uh, section here? Uh, because it's a more effective uh, data passing mechanism on Windows uh, section object, uh, more efficient and fast. And uh, what about the region? A uh, wide region is a uh, representative range of the shared memory uh, can be opened within the context of the given port. Uh, the section can be shared ac uh, accessed by one process uh, which only have a right access. And meanwhile, uh, the client only have the right access. Uh, this picture uh, describes the relationship between the section. Yeah. We can split up the whole section into uh, different regions. Uh, one piece is represented by a uh, one region object. Uh, we have offset uh, size, uh, which is representing the map of inset and the size of the sec section. Yeah, uh, let's see some uh, historical vulnerabilities. Yeah. Um, first kind of bug is, is a kind of logical bug uh, in ARPC when uh, you know there's too much. Uh, uh, research uh, on the internet um, it related to uh, the uh, doing when the service doing some uh, file operating op operations. Uh, it need to uh, impersonate the colors or token and doing some uh, operations on file. Uh, however, you know sometimes it failure to properly handle the file operation uh, when the file like the symbol link 
it may be resulting in the service being able to modify or write or delete and even create uh, some files when clients should not have the permission on these operations. So uh, this vulnerability, uh, CVE 2020 and 0911, is an example of the using user's device map uh, when impersonating users and the service while operating on the malicious uh, MSAI files uh, on in the user's device map installer directory, and it will directly uh, to another path. So when the service revert to the system privilege, uh, it also trusts the content uh, to read from the client installer directory and source. Um, the privilege acceleration happened. Yeah. Uh, uh, this kind of bug exploitation have much articles and research uh, on the internet uh, by using tricks of uh, is uh, firstly uh, I think it's discovered by Google Research uh, James, James for sure uh, by using tricks like NTFS junctions, uh, higher link or object symbol links, and op opportunistic locks. You can easily uh, write exhortations uh, on these kind of bugs. Yeah, uh, the second second example is um, malicious. A uh, memory corruption bug inside LPC RPC kernel uh, in recent years. Uh, we have seen a lot of um, memory corruption issues inside the LPC RPC kernel. Uh, so the following code snippet is a part of the vulnerability and is associated with the LPC section of blob object. Uh, when we create the LPC section uh, in the map legacy port view function, uh, there's a race window before the function with the uh, view port. View object. Uh, during this race window, the attacker can uh, destroy the LPC port object, uh, causing it uh, LPC create section view function uh, access a uh, free pointer. The picture describes the uh, raised window uh, in the connect port function. Uh, the kernel, uh, kernel creates the first uh, LPC port, and uh, we can try to close the handle table in the second thread. Uh, if this moment, close moment, uh, between the create section and the create view port function, you can get a blue screen. Uh, but however, this kind of issue is, I think, it's a little bit hard to exploit because you need to win the race first. Uh, what we observe is that most of these uh, memory corruption bug uh, inside LPC kernel or RPC services, and most of them are traditionally memory corruption bugs. Uh, due to the server side lack of check when RPC services uh, handle data from the client side. And last example is, uh, I think it's very interesting, a uh, logical flow bug in LPC RPC discovered in 2016, 2017. Uh, research found that the kernel doesn't protect the shared memory privilege uh, when using it to pass the uh, message data. In theory, the kernel changed the shared section protection in client size uh, to read only uh, preventing the client side changing the memory uh, while server side uh, calling stop code that may be cause double fetch flaws in server side. Uh, you can use the virtual protect function to change the shared memory uh, to, uh, from read only to write and <coughs> read write and causing data race condition in server side. Uh, it's pretty uh, jiggable, right? Uh, imagine uh, we have a have already have a uh, RPC function uh, accepts a string parameter and print it twice with a slip. Uh, between these two options. Uh, we write a POC and uh, send a string and try to call the virtual protect and change the content of the string. Uh, we can see the server side point to two uh, different uh, strings. Um, it means that uh, we can change the parameter while the server side uh, perform any other operation. Uh, although it, uh, it's this vulnerability has been fixed, uh, I decide to uh, learn more from it. Uh, maybe we can find uh, more interesting stuff. So, uh, first question is: uh, Is really secure after the patch? Yeah, uh, from my all of the research uh, result, I know uh, a shared memory is uh, available for uh, almost any RPC over LPC services. So I decide to write a custom RPC services and try to uh, change their Memory, pro memory protection again, but finally uh, get a virtual protect ex error. So, uh, what happened to after the patch? So I decided to uh, learn more from the reverse engineering. Uh, first, uh, NTS kernel tried to secure the view of the section. 
it doesn't allow to change the memory attribute from the user space. And the secondly, both into EOS and RPC RT4 module DLL enable secure mode in mode check. It means that the server will not manipulate the shared memory uh, when it detected the shared memory is unsafe. Uh, this technique, uh, this is a technique details. Uh, the security mechanism mechanism will handle shared memory from client side. Uh, kernel use map view, secure view of section function to create a security view, a secure virtual memory, and you can change the uh, attribute. And And when sending the attribute, uh, a sending message to the server, it's check the LPC section and the region we use to send the message to see if it's safe. And the region can find it with more than two view objects. It's trying to change the attributes of the shared memory address uh, to read only. If this step falls, then the server side will be marked with unsafe and the RPC RT4.dll will use the shared memory to unmarshal the uh, server side. And this is the code pieces uh, from the user mode in RPC RT4. Uh, it will acquire the RPC message attribute, uh, including the security flag of the RPC region. If the region is unsecure, you can see uh, it will lock it a heap buffer. Uh, it's managed by P cache object and copying the shared memory to the heap buffer. So it, it will not cause double fish vulnerability. So it, when the server decide uh, detect the region is unsafe. I also take a look at the uh, virtual protect ES function to uh, see how the kernel patch uh, uh, put to protect the shared memory. Uh, you know, uh, I found the uh, allocate uh, kernel as allocate a special VAT event object uh, to uh, secure the mark the VAT objects is a security view or not. Uh, so we know that Windows kernel use mmbad object to describe one virtual address in uh, user space. It's, uh, it's uh, described the start and the ending of the virtual page. Uh, when changing the memory of uh, production, it will check if the VAT event object is uh, in the VAT virtual address uh, distributed object. If it is checked if it had the uh, VAT event object in the event list. Uh, unfortunately, the value event structure symbol was de deleted from Windows 11, uh, so I can only use the old symbol from Windows 10. And digging into it, uh, there's two key functions uh, for address uh, protection. One is MI set WSSLE protection and uh, revert MI uh, revert valid PTE function. Uh, this is the output from the 
a, a deep wind debug uh, in the right picture, and is, you can see uh, b uh, before and after the WSE WS protection, it changed a bit of the WSLE protection from four to one. Yeah, I guess it's mean to read write when the value is four and uh, no access value is one. Uh, left picture describe the PTE content uh, about Intel, uh, it, which also you know is the page table structure. Uh, after the function of the MI revert val uh, valid uh, PTE, the R and the right bit will set to zero, so the whole page in the current uh, current side will uh, change to the read only. Uh, but the server side with another you will use another page table uh, So when what about the WLC protection? Uh, I think it's, uh, this bit from 16, 60 to 62 is reversed according to uh, Intel's documentation. So I guess Microsoft use it for some special purpose. Yeah. And uh, when changing the address protection, it's called mm check security uh, secure VAT to check if there's a, a special VAT event as we talked before. And uh, uh, we, when we call the compare PT protection, uh, to we'll compare the page table. Finally, compare the page table uh, protection with, with the desired protection mask. Uh, per, uh, we uh, process the, uh, from, we pass to the virtual protect EX uh, to see. Uh, return. A return change uh, attribute if, if two value is the same. Uh, if not equal to the virtual protect EX, it will return error. Unfortunately, uh, WS protection now is one, so it's not the same with the four. Uh, it really has some weird chaos, you see, when changing the protection from the address. It's really uh, not the same as we thought. Uh, I tr actually try to bypass uh, this function. Uh, so it's changed the PT. So it's changing. <laughs> oh, yeah, now it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I try to bypass the uh, this function, and uh, it's changed the protection one page. So if you are lucky to share memory for more than two page, and uh, you only write data to the first page without doing any other operations, so um, the op operation will fail. Uh, but the secure V function, uh, you know. Uh, because uh, the rest of the page doesn't even have the uh, page table, uh, so you can change the attributes. Okay, let's uh, see the vulnerability details uh, we found in uh, the region. Uh, the kernel always do trying to align the allocation size to one page. Uh, you can split the session object. Uh, the starting offset section actually. Um, it's auto increased uh, based on the uh, uh, last region and the offset. However, the allocation size is not checked. So, what about this um, small security uh, um, flaw? What is small undiscovered issue can cause uh, afterward? Uh, but you still remember the previous picture. Yeah. Uh, assuming we have allocated, uh, we already allocated four uh, region. Uh, the size of the first region is zero x one thousand. So the start of start offset of the second region uh, is actually will be one zero x one thousand. Based on the info in the picture, we can know a starting offset of the region three is zero x uh, four thousand, uh, which is pretty easy to understand and uh, calculate. It. Uh, so based on the, this uh, info we know, we can see how unchecked section, unchecked uh, section size uh, we can do in the following. Uh, if we are lucky, the uh, region was an extremely big size uh, with the zero F F F uh, zero two is actually minus uh, F F F E. Uh, based on the region uh, and the view granularity, the final offset of region two is actually will be zero. So the allocation size uh, will be still zero. So what does this mean? Um, uh, this means that the region two will overlap the, with the region one, and they will be mapping to the same physical address. Um, we can use the view one to send the, and receive the error PC message. 
And this view will be projected by the LPC kernel by using secure view against the right uh, function. But the second view will be left, and the kernel will do nothing on it. So because we don't even use it, then so we can use the address of the second region to actually change um, the content. It is writable, so the double fish will happen again. Uh, the secure view uh, right against the right function uh, can't protect you anymore. So it is, uh, there will be man, uh, still many questions uh, for you. Uh, as you see in the previous page, uh, the region allocation size is zero. Uh, so you, while you still can change the content of the shared memory, um, it will because uh, the map view of function support mapping a size of zero. Uh, you are lucky that page with size uh, one page by default, so we don't need to worry about it. And the second, if you said the map view function can uh, cannot, uh, it can accept with zero size, why don't you pass zero size? Uh, because it's unacceptable. Uh, there was a, there's a check uh, before the allocation, uh, allocate the view, create view, create a uh, section view function. It's also, um, the region object can uh, use it in more than two views, uh, but the situation I've never encountered uh, until now. Uh, so let's uh, race again on the Windows 11 again. Uh, based on the custom IRPC service, uh, we created uh, two views with the same section offset. So uh, the overlap happened, and the kernel only secured the first view, uh, leaving the second view address writable. So you can see we successfully changed the content of the uh, server's uh, parameter without changing the protection of the uh, uh, first view. Uh, the RPG services will, will be vulnerable again. <laughs> so we have already win the race. So from the page table entry uh, from the wind debug, I uh, can see two address pointed to same pages from a uh, page frame number. It means that it may to the pointed to the same physical memory. And uh, we can see from the protection we break into the debug when server trying to uh, print the stream from client. So the first page is uh, read only and uh, it's writable, but it's, uh, the second page is writable uh, on the same physical memory, uh, which result confirm our ideas and the result is the result from the terminal. So from the exploitation analyze. Uh, so let's discuss some uh, possible exploitation. Uh, from the assessment before, uh, there's two ways to uh, export. Uh, one is uh, you can use Windows services or third party services using uh, file operations and for exploitation techniques uh, used by, uh, created by James Posho, uh, change to write system DLL or, and get any uh, system privilege or bypass some security check in and uh, access some functions uh, which admin user uh, can access or bypass the uh, USA on USA on the Windows 11. Uh, uh, the, on the other side, we can also use uh, memory corruption uh, exploitation techniques. Uh, firstly, I can almost crash any RPG services uh, over ARPC services and even can get system shell. So I must uh, admit that uh, I'm lazy sometimes. Just want to make the exploitation as easy as possible. So unfortunately, uh, Microsoft is unstupid. Uh, they were deleted the services code, which uh, seven years ago that Thomas used to export them, uh, to export this double fish issue. Uh, we need to find another possible way. But however, it's actually possible to find the RPC services uh, meet the, these conditions. It's impossible, I think. Uh, first, uh, the service need to use the shared memory without copying it to another address, and also need to have some sensitive operations on the file. So consider this is, uh, situations, it's almost impossible to find this kind of service. At least I didn't find one. Uh, you can try it. Uh, but I think it's possible on some uh, third party uh, services. Uh, next, we should know what kind of uh, argument can we use to double fish. Uh, simple structure or pointed, uh, like uh, integer pointer string, or uh, double string use uh, shared memory. Uh, the context structure, which also you call, uh, you may now call, you may know is uh, called bungus struct, uh, well, according to heap buffer. Uh, you may confuse about what is the 
uh, complex uh, or simple structure to pretty simple. Uh, you just remember if a structure contains a pointer, it will be a complex structure. Uh, this is an example of the simple complex structure uh, we've seen, uh, and they were uh, treated differently when RPC on mushrooms. Uh, and above is the bumpy structure, uh, which were never used uh, uh, in the shared memory, so which below is an example of the uh, simple structure. Uh, we needed to understand RPC uh, format and the type of format first. And the uh, proc format is uh, one server function info, uh, parameter type, and uh, store the, uh, it's stored offset uh, inside the parameter. And for example, if we have a uh, output one function in server side, uh, the prof uh, proc format uh, will generate an uh, IDL uh, compiler from the compiler, uh, storing the parameter into like the parameter type offset and the allocation info of the parameter. And the ideal compiler also generates a comment for every value, uh, which is uh, pretty nice. So I think it's pretty easy to create and understand uh, how it works. Oh, it's okay now? Yeah. And we can see uh, the difference between the simple and the complex structure in the type format. Okay, the proc mark uh, give us where the parameter type definition located in the type format stream. So we can see different uh, between the simple and the complex structure. <clears throat> in the header flag, you can see them in the comment. Uh, there's three situation buffer flow I can cause. Uh, I try to find the exploitation services by code audit uh, or fast the content. Uh, but the one, uh, is one condition is inside the RPC uh, stream marshal function. Uh, the p-memory content we can control. So one service has multiple output stream uh, result sending to the client. So it also will use the shared memory to send to the client. So we can fill the whole shared memory and the argument gap. Uh, assuming the first string is 0x15 lens and the second is 0x500 uh, uh, lens. So we can fill the argument gap in the memory uh, after the server finishes the sub code and return to the RPC RT4. And it sends the client size will be over 0x1000. So it's, it's the maximum size in shared memory will cause a uh, crash in the service. And uh, also, another heap operation. Uh, which means uh, uh, which means the size of the stream store uh, inside a pointer. So it's not easy to find this pattern of the server. So we can change the size of the stream when the server unmarshal the server resulting in the stream uh, sending to the client. Uh, it, however, it's still uh, possible, not possible to exploit. You can only cause the shared memory output 
uh, out of bound read. Uh, so when calling the p memory function, so it's a pity. And the uh, third exploitation is a uh, spool service. Um, Spool server service. Uh, when it open a printer, it will double check access the name of the printer. And the first uh, time, uh, the server will cause WC's a string result uh, offset uh, can be a large offset, and uh, it then allocate a string again, and re recalculate the string length. So this time, the string can be small size. So you will cause out of a bound write a null pointer, a uh, null null bytes. Uh, but it's, this issue is hard to exploit. So we also need to win the race and doing heap function uh, to construct some useful target. So it's really a huge challenge. So um, what should I do? So I decide to uh, try to do some easy stuff first. Let's see. Uh, by passing UIC, uh, how it works, uh, the key function inside the uh, application information service uh, in uh, UIC uh, service uh, luckily, the service accepts the command line argument from the shared memory uh, without copying it to the heap buffer, so we can have a chance to use this. Um, and also, the program name and the CMD line, arg CMD line ar argument uh, are also stored in the shared memory. Uh, the USC has a special feature. Uh, when the client executes some special program, it will not launch the save confirm window. So we can use the feature to launch the arbitrary program without it launch any confirm window uh, from app info service. So we can bypass it. Uh, it's also not the easy as we analyzed. Uh, there's a white list uh, inside the service. Uh, you should know that there's also argument white list uh, for some special program, uh, which you can, which you not uh, not you not not need to launch the uh, confirm window. Uh, so also the new process uh, was launched by IPP info service uh, will suspend first. That means that we still cannot execute our payload. So server will check the process image section with the program file section. Uh, means although we have launched a malicious program without confirm window, the IPP info will IPP info service will also um, launch launch the uh, confirm window because the two image are not the same. So it's. Microsoft is not stupid, stupid, really a good solution to prevent a launching from any malicious program. So, but unfortunately, they uh, doesn't check the argument program. By launch, uh, after the launching the program, it does not, doesn't check the argument. So we still have to change. Uh, the good thing is uh, we can create a malicious MSCC file. And there's a research on the MSC file when MSCC uh, open and auto launch the CMD shell uh, with a malicious strip. Uh, you know, service.msc is a, in the uh, white list of the USC, uh, USC services. So uh, we can see we can launch a high integrated command line shell without any other problem. Uh, but I'm not satisfied doing this. Uh, it's even not a vulnerability to Microsoft. So you should be an administrator first. And the uh, main system to the system is not a security boundary as we seen from the uh, Microsoft. So last is the uh, get system privilege. Uh, another good thing is is truly ex exploitable. Uh, I found a service in DCOM launch. Uh, the key is a key service in Windows system uh, interface. Uh, normal user can access a uh, list. Uh, the service GUID, service uh, uh, DLL pass, so, and the service function uh, I used to exploit. Uh, it's a game, get game name uh, config, yeah. It's truly, and it's true, and the three parameter with simple structure means the service can use the shared memory when RPC get the ex uh, execution from the start point. And the first parameter is the GUID stream. It's come from the re registry, uh, representing a game, as you know, uh, GUID in the picture. Uh, this GUID represents the battlefield. Uh, I think some of you might played it before. Uh, and most importantly, the key, f is the key is fully controlled by the current user, because uh, every user in the system have the uh, independent uh, game store configuration in the user hive. So you can just traverse the key, current key, and the final one. Uh, next, we may thought, what can we do in the service? 
uh, because uh, we cannot pass in the uh, uh, parameter through the shared memory. So we can, uh, pretty lucky, we can do memory leak and array buffer array overflow in this function. So first, the function directly write the string uh, pointer to the shared memory, which means we can leak the shared memory address mapped uh, in the server side. Although the memory is uh, unmapped after the request, but the address will never change. So we can use the shared memory to construct our fake object and the vtables, and plus this uh, stack array buffer floor upon the access. And after the information leak on the shared memory, you can see the function directly use the index from the shared memory and write a shared memory address a pointer out of bound on the stack. Uh, this means that we can do info leak and uh, stack buffer overflow uh, just uh, in one function. And uh, it's a good and uh, read and a good write primitive. Uh, this is the strategy, a strategy I use. Uh, first, I need to leak the shared memory address, and uh, we just uh, call the server function and the another thread to repeatedly read uh, the shared memory so we can get the pointer. And when we get the shared memory, we can create a fake object, a vtable, uh, based on the leaked information in the step one. And finally, uh, we can try to change the index of the shared memory to trick the stack array uh, floor, buffer overflow, overflow to load our evil DLL to the service and get system shell. Uh, I'll show you one step up by step. And this is uh, output from the WinDebug window. We can see server write the shared memory pointer on the shared memory. We just read it repeatedly from the client until uh, we read the uh, uh, pointer, share, share pointer. Uh, next, the real problem came. So we can get a staff array buffer overflow, but uh, how and uh, where to write, write and what to write? Uh, I choose to write the RPC message object on the stack. Uh, first, the RPC message is a member in MID of stack message, and the object is allocated on the stack. So before RPC call the server, it's easy to, to over, override it, and it's all the shared memory is uh, not executable. So we can just overwrite and return if we uh, choose to override the return address, uh, are, we cannot directly do the ROP. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see what we write from the view of the wind debug. Uh, RCX is the array index. Uh, we can fully control it. RX is a shared memory address. And uh, we also can fully control it. So you can see uh, we easily override the RPC message pointer on the stack. So when the server return to RPC core engine, it will be operated on the fake object. Uh, then we can see from the engine called NDR get buffer, RCX already being the shared memory address. And uh, this is a layout of the shared memory. Uh, there's uh, also some type check uh, because we can fully control it, so it's not a problem. Uh, I choose to construct the fake RPC binding handle uh, in the shared memory. Uh, real problem came. Uh, we can see finally you arrived to the virtual function calling, so it is the uh, uh, XFG check. Um, the first uh, 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 variable, and uh, uh, I want to actually load, uh, uh, directly call to the load library, but you can see uh, the variable and the uh, first parameter is overlapped, so we can directly under we cannot uh, directly call the load library. Uh, so uh, we can always find a way. Uh, if I can directly call load library, I can find a legal callable function to to register pivoting. So we know there's a technique uh, called uh, stack pivoting in CTF ex exportation techniques where you can directly ROP on the current stack. So for the register pivoting, I just need to find a function which can exchange the content of the register RCX. And uh, uh, then the register will point you to the DLL pass. And luckily, I found this kind of a uh, uh, function you can, which can ex exchange the register is inside the compass DLL. I can directly call bypass the XFG check. It's a callback function, and this, this is a layout. Uh, the RCX before we call into the callback is point to bind handle object, and the value in the purple color is the type of information, and the callback function uh, we can call load libraries uh, with login function to with the DLL pass in the second parameter. So luckily, before the control flow check the validity of the callback function, the function is not first member of the vtable. It's at the 0x70, so the start location of the vtable we can use to put our DLL pass. 
Uh, so without worrying about the function validity, because we were it was never used. So then we can load our custom DL without any resistance. Yeah. And I will show you the uh, demo. I use a, uh, a normal user. It's in user group. And I write it in all the uh, POC in the pattern. And you can see it's a normal user with a medium privilege. It's not in administrator group. And then we check the uh, DCOM service to see if we can uh, it will load our malicious DIL. Okay, we can see we leak the shared memory and the COM base. And we see we already loaded our evil DIL. And there's the uh, shell came in. And we type who am I? And we get a system privilege with all the privilege. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, a conclusion. So the voice. So to be continue. Um, I think there's still some research I need to do in the future. Uh, like the automation info, info extract from the uh, RPC interface. I need to find the um, exportation service and the argument which meet the exportation bar. Uh, if you have any good ideas, and uh, you can please share it to me. I also want to know some uh, good ideas uh, for the tool develop developing. And there's a much special more spe uh, special features in RPC and they need to be examined and the more if effective exportation techniques. If you have any other, any good ideas, uh, feel free to contact me, yeah. And the wrap up, uh, this is our bank hunting experience uh, I want to share with you. And first, uh, don't trust any patches from the vendor. It may still not patch the vulnerability uh, effectively. And also, the patch analyze is still more effect in bug hunting. Uh, you should be more uh, creative and criticize when criticizing when bug hunting. Yeah, you should dare to do it, <laughs> and we should be patient. In but bug hunting is a long way marathon. And at last, uh, don't meet any meet any miss any other any side effect. This effect may cause security flaw afterwards. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, for this uh, type of service uh, we mentioned in the talk, there's still much special feature in the RPC RPC. Uh, we need to examine. And the security of ARPC is actually affect the security of the RPC. Uh, for Microsoft, uh, we can see, see it's really done a great tireless work uh, on the security of the RPC services. Although we caused the double fish in the RPC services, uh, we needed to still find an uh, exportable service in the and the parameters still meet uh, very uh, strict uh, bars. And this is a reference uh, of our talk. And uh, thank you. Uh, is there another question? Uh, because you know, the microphone has any problems. Uh, sorry for that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you.